everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Before we continue this vlog with the Hussif project that I was working on in the last vlog, I have a super, super quick project for you that uh, I've been wanting to make myself and so I figured I should show you how to make it too because it's literally one of the easiest wearables that you can make. So it is a circle skirt. And I know, when I say a circle skirt, that sounds complicated. I mean, you have to cut out the circle, which is annoying. You have to hem the circle, which is annoying. But you don't have to do any of that if you start with a circular tablecloth. So what I have here is a fall tablecloth that I bought at Goodwill uh, about a week or so ago. And it was just like the perfect size to make into a circle skirt. I really love holiday skirts and <laughs> they just make me very, very happy. And so when I saw this one sitting with all of the Halloween decorations, I figured I had to do it. And I uh, looked, <laughs> I happened to be wearing, I think, my other tablecloth circle skirt the day that I went into Goodwill, which was really handy because I was able to just kind of hold this up to myself and see if the length was right. So you do want to make sure that you're starting with a circle skirt that is a good enough length for you. Now, I like all of my skirts to be about midi length, like mid calf, mid to high calf, I guess. And I am tall. So that is a pretty long length for me. I think in general, I don't like any skirts shorter than about 30 inches. I should probably measure that. Yeah, about a 30 inch skirt is just about the perfect length for me. So that means that I need to look for tablecloths that are pretty darn big. If you are a shorter person or you like a shorter skirt, you can get away with a much smaller tablecloth, but this one happened to be just the right size. So besides the tablecloth, the only other thing that you're going to need is some wide skirt waistband elastic. I happen to have this gold sparkly elastic in my stash and I really don't know why I had it in my stash. And it's just a hair short, I think, for what I want, but this stuff is like super stretchy, like too stretchy. So it's okay that it's gonna be a little short. I think I have 36 inches with a normal skirt elastic. I would probably go for like a 38 inch elastic, maybe even 39. But again, this stuff is like ridiculously stretchy and I've used another color of this on a skirt before doing my normal elastic measurement and it actually wound up too big. So um, get yourself some elastic, just test how stretchy it is first before you start to use it. And in general, you want it to be a couple inches smaller than your waist size. So again, you have your tablecloth, you have your elastic, you have your sewing machine, that's all you need. That's why this is super, super simple. The really the only other thing that you need is your waist measurement and your hip measurement. And I say your hip measurement because you need to make the waist opening large enough to get over your hips. <laughs> so don't cut this just to your waist size like you would a normal fitted circle skirt. This is an elastic skirt. You have to get it on somehow. Let's go ahead and start working on this skirt and I'll show you just how easy it is. To start off with, you're going to want to have your skirt perfectly folded in quarters. So I'm starting by folding it in half, making sure that all of my edges match up and I'm pressing it to get all of those wrinkles out. Once you have your tablecloth folded in quarters, you're going to want to make sure that your corner is really, really smooth, especially at the top part. You're just going to want to make sure that it's very smooth, very flat. Definitely use your iron. You can even use a ruler to tuck in that corner really well. Just make sure that it's really, really even. Then you're going to cut out a quarter of a circle that is a quarter of just larger than your hip measurement so that you can get this skirt on and off. You can go ahead and find the radius of your hip measurement. There's lots of online calculators that'll help you find that. So find the radius of like an inch larger than your hip measurement and plug that in and that way you can find out where your start and your finish are. So for example, I just went to this omnicalculator.com and you can type in your circumference, which mine one inch larger than my hips is 52 and it gives you the radius which is 8.27 so that is what I'm going to start with now don't forget your seam allowances though because that is going to take you down another half an inch so really when you're drawing out your radius and this does not have to be exact because it's going to get gathered to elastic but when you're drawing out your radius 
take that like 8.27 and actually subtract half an inch if your seam allowance is half an inch and that is the marking that you will make. So I'm going with a 7.75 for my radius and I'm just marking that with my friction pen and going around and just making a couple of guide markings so that I know where the circle will go to. And then I'm just going to connect those markings. And then we're going to cut that out. Now that will leave us with a length here of 27 inches. So that left me with a length of 27 inches, which honestly seems a little short to me. So what I did was I actually went and measured the other tablecloth skirt that I've made, which is 29 and a half inches long, including the seam allowance. And now I don't remember how wide that skirt started out, but I'm guessing it's approximately the same width as this. So what I've actually done now is I went in and I drew in a second line, which gives me a 29 and a half inch length. And it's, I'm going to cut this line first, see how far off it is from the skirt getting to actually fit me. And then if it's off, I will go further, but it's much easier to, well, it's impossible to make your circle smaller once you've already cut it it's a lot easier to just make it bigger so again i'm going to start with this small circle and then i might work up to that larger circle if i need to so this leaves me with a shape that looks like it's probably large enough for my waist but I don't know if it's going to be large enough to get on. So I'm going to just go ahead and try putting it on and see if it fits. So as I expected, this first cut, oh hey look, there's Dora. As I expected, this first cut is large enough to get on, uh, but that said it was kind of a tight squeeze over the bust. On the other hand, it's just about as short as I want to go. So I think I am going to cut this down maybe a half inch further so that it's a little easier to get on over the bust. It still probably won't be able to go off over my hips, but honestly, the length is more important to me on this one than being able to get it off over my hips. I can get things on and off over my head just fine and I will live with that. So. Again, I don't want to go that much shorter. The other skirt that I have made out of a tablecloth must have been a wider tablecloth. So do be careful when you go to purchase your tablecloths that they will be a length that is good for you. Because again, I thought this one was plenty wide, but it was actually a little bit on the short side. That said, it's a super cute skirt. And at this point, other than cutting off that extra half inch around the waist, all we need to do is put the elastic on and we have a skirt. So this again, super, super easy. Let's go ahead, cut that extra half inch off and get to putting our elastic on. This time, since we have a good guide about where our uh, circle is, we don't have to worry about lining up the bottom of the skirt. We're just lining up the circle that I already cut and making our half inch mark. Now, because this is a circle skirt, a half inch is actually pretty significant. So this should give me plenty of room to get it on and off over my bust without having to like squeeze into the skirt. And that was my goal. This, by the way, is a 100% cotton fabric. So, you know, do look for natural fibers if you can when you are looking for your tablecloth. And I think this cost me, it was like new in the package. So I think it cost me like $8.99 from Goodwill. So not too bad for a skirt. There we go. We have removed the extra half inch and I'm not even going to worry about putting this back on. I'm just going to go ahead and finish off the top and put the elastic on. So I'm going to finish my top seam, my raw edge, with my serger, but if you don't have a serger, you could just zigzag over this edge as well. You just wanna make sure that it won't fray because as you can see from this fabric, even just putting it on for a second really led to a lot of fraying. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that through the serger.
Next, you're going to want to take your elastic, cut to whatever measurement that you need it to, and you want to just melt the ends just a little bit so that you won't get any fraying in your elastic while you're wearing it. Done. Then put your ends together and sew your ends on the machine. I recommend using a triple stitch for this because you want it to really stay still. The other thing is that do your like half inch or whatever your seam allowance that you want to do. Once it's sewn in, you're gonna want to open up that seam and stitch down, top stitch, your seam allowances down like this. So we're on another line of stitching on either edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'll be back when that's done. Have some cat content. Once you have stitched down the edges of the waistband, ask your cat for your skirt back. Excuse me, Dora. Dora, can I have this? Once you have successfully wrestled your skirt away from your cat, find the waist, and you're going to divide this waist into eight points, basically. You want to find eight equal points on this waist. Now, if you have a very small waist, then you can probably get away with four points, like if you have, I don't know, a 25 inch or under waist, but for a larger waist, go ahead and divide it into eight points. You're going to do that both on your skirt waistband and on your elastic waistband. And that way we can match those points together and pin them in place and it makes it easier to feed it through the sewing machine. have all of the points on my waistband which by the way if you have a specific pattern on your skirt maybe like a plaid or something or even a, a detailed pattern you probably want to identify what's going to be the front of your skirt what's going to be the back of your skirt before you make these points mine is an all over random pattern and so I am paying a little bit of attention to the grain I'm going to have the front and the back of my skirt be on the straight of grain but beyond that, I'm not paying attention to the pattern. So now that I've done the markings on the skirt portion, I'm going to do the same thing over on the elastic portion. And that is the elastic portion done. Now we're going to match up all of those points, right sides to right sides. Pin them in place with sturdy pins. You don't want ones that are going to be prone to bending. Once it is all pinned, it is time to sew this in place. This one will actually be pretty easy because I didn't go with a measurement that would go for my hips. There's really not a lot of skirt to stretch out to the elastic. But basically, as you feed it through your machine, you are going to stretch out the elastic. So if you have an option where your presser foot like automatically goes up, turn that off. And you're going to stretch out the elastic and make sure that the skirt stays aligned with it. You could also put more pins in if you want, but I find that in this small of an area, it's pretty unnecessary. All right, let's go sew it together. I'm going to use a slightly smaller seam allowance for this because my elastic waistband is a little bit narrower than I wanted to and the length itself is a little bit shorter than I wanted, so. your waistband with your hot iron remove your little pink marks and your skirt is done Ta-da! and now I have a fun new fall skirt super comfy because of the elastic waistband the only downside to a skirt like this is that because there are no seams you have nowhere to add pockets so you could add patch pockets if you want but otherwise if you're okay with a pocketless skirt, this is a super, super easy way 
to make a quick and easy skirt. And now I'm ready for fall. Hello, before I get started on the Hussif apron today, which is Monday, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you because I know this sounds silly after all of the housebound coronavirus everything, but I have been basically literally housebound for the past since Thursday at this point because of how smoky it is outside. It's just not safe to breathe outside here in the Pacific Northwest due to all of the fires that are happening all up and down the West Coast. And so during the rest of this coronavirus time, I would be going outside at least once a day to walk lion and, you know, see people and have a reason to put on makeup and whatever. And I haven't had that now for four days. And so you are my reason to get dressed and put on makeup and just like be cheery and whatever. So I just wanted to say thank you all so much for watching these videos because it means a lot to me in a time like this. Anyway, before I start tearing up at that thought, <laughs> now on to the House of Dress apron. So a couple of days ago, I went and played with this vintage apron that I have, just putting it on the form over the dress and kind of seeing where I wanted it to lay, how big I wanted it, etc. And this one was going to be too wide, too, I think a little bit too long, but it was a good judge for me to figure out where I wanted to take some of this with away. And so I went and I wrote down a few notes. None of these include seam allowance, but I'm going to have 25 inches apron that is gathered into 14 inches across the top going into the waistband. And keeping in mind that the waistband is not the apron fabric, the waistband is the yellow fabric that's meant to look like a ruler, which I think I'm gonna do with like a fabric pen or like a paint marker or something. I haven't quite decided that, but I don't want to have to do all of that with like embroidery stitches or anything. So that is my plan for that. And it's going to be 22 and a half inches long. Again, adding seam allowances to all that. I have decided uh, based on the results of my Instagram poll, which was more than two thirds, I think of you said that I should do the top as like a pinner type apron. And when I took my Colonial Williamsburg pinner apron that I got when I was like 12 and put it on the Huss of Dress and pinned this up, I really did like that look. So I am gonna go with the pinner apron look and actually I am just going to pattern it using this exact size. Mine is going to have some of the lace trim that is around the neckline. It's going to have that on the sides, but I really liked the size of the pinner apron. So, and in fact, looking at it now, I feel like this apron is actually about 14 inches across. It'd be funny if the apron that I'm making is just about the exact same size as my Williamsburg apron. I think this one's a little long, but that would be really funny. I think now I have to measure this and see, because I was doing all of my figuring out earlier with the vintage apron, not the pinner apron. So yeah, that's amusing because I like the look of this on there. So anyway, I'm going to dive into that. The apron is going to be two layers, both top and bottom, I think. Part of that, for the top at least, is that I think I'm gonna have to make it out of muslin because I don't think I have any other white fabric that I can use besides like organdy, which would be probably very wrong for this. And the other part of that really is that just structurally speaking for the bottom half of this apron, it really needs to have two layers because what we're looking at here is first, there are giant needles that are stuck through this apron, four of them. And there are also more of those scallops on the edge. And so the scallops themselves would need some sort of facing anyway. And then with the needles running through there, you need a little bit more structure to hold those into place. I'm not 100% positive how I am going to hold them into place. That has yet to be seen. And I do need to go out and buy the dowels to make into the needles. But I think a two layer apron is going to do a better job of holding them into place anyway. So. All that said, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my apron pieces, all, I guess, four of them, two for bib, two for the apron skirt. And I will probably also go ahead and cut out my waistband pieces because I won't get that far without being able to do that. This is going to take me a while because I am gonna do the blanket stitches on here too. So the skirt of the apron 
will take me a fair bit but I am excited for it. I feel like now we've reached embellishing stage and the Hasif dress is really going to come to life and look like a Hasif. I just finished cutting out all of my pieces. What I did with the apron skirt part was I folded it in half and laid both pieces on top of each other, folded in half, so that I could make sure that the scallops would match everywhere. Not a hundred percent positive. I like this silly corner. I hope it doesn't look too weird, but that is what I wound up with, with starting in the middle of a scallop over here in the center. So again, I hope that's not really strange once I sew it together, but that is going to be my next step. I've already pinned the bib pieces together, so I'll sew along these three edges and turn and then add the lace on that piece. And then down here, I'm going to sew along all of the scallops on these three sides, because remember those folded in half right now. Then once all that's done, I am going to serge across the bottom of the bib and the top of the skirt. So I might save this for a little bit just till I figure out the whole needle situation. I did wind up tweaking these corners just a little bit. You can see the difference of where I really took it in and I turned it right side out and after I stitched this in and it looks way better so I'm going to cut off all that ugly excess. The other thing that I wanted to show you is that I basically have finished the pinner part but I feel like it's way too wide. I didn't really think about the fact that the lace was going to make it look a lot wider. The lace is just pinned in place, by the way, currently. But the lace really does make it look way wider. I mean, that's an inch on either side. And so I am going to wait until I have this skirt kind of gathered up, ready to go. But I have a feeling I'm going to be taking this in on one side and cutting off the excess and repinning one side of the lace because I think it's just too wide now. Anyway, that's where I am at currently. I'm going to go ahead and clip off that excess on the curves and turn that right side out, press it, and be ready to put the apron together, I guess. So I put everything on, obviously, and I'm glad I did because the bib front of the apron is definitely way too wide. I'm actually going to take a one inch tuck in, well, I'm not going to take a one inch tuck right now. It's pinned one inch. I'm going to take one inch out of the apron on the side. Oh, there goes my belt and make it one inch smaller and then add the lace. And then the apron, like drape part, whatever you call this part of the apron, the skirt part of the apron is honestly, I think a little wider than I would have wanted as well. It seems kind of fine, but then I have to have the ruler bit that hangs down. And right now it just feels really off to the side. Like I feel like I would want this more like there, but then obviously it's covering the apron. But if I make the apron way narrower, then it just seems weird. So I think this is going to have to be out here. And um, then that yellow band that I had been holding will be around the waist and those will get the markings and everything on them too. I really love the little scallops on it. Honestly, I just wanna sit down right now and do blanket stitching because this smoke has just sapped me of like all energy and willingness to sew. But I'm pushing through anyway because I just wanna to get to a point where I can sit down and hand sew. So at least now I think I figured this out and I'm gonna go ahead and take that bit out of the bib and put this on the waistband. But hey, it's the first time that I've actually put this on with the collar and the sleeves and I think the collar and sleeves work well. Though there's, it's definitely like dowdy Alice in Wonderland right now. So hopefully once I add all of the rest of the stuff, it won't be that way because that's not what I'm going for. I just wanted to pop back really quickly and explain how I'm assembling this. So I have an interfaced waistband piece and then I have a non-interfaced waistband piece. And I have put right sides together with the interfaced piece to the apron and then sandwiched the non-interfaced piece on the other side. And I have sewn around most of this. So you see that I did the entire like tube, sorry it's not focusing on the end there, but I did the entire tube down on the end and again over on this end, but I've left this free and that is both so that I can turn it, but also because the bib of the apron needs to go in there. So once I turn it right sides out, I will press the seam allowance down, put the bib and the belt hanging part of the tape measure in there, which is why I left extra room on this side. So both of those will go in there because the belt hanging piece comes 
over and then down so it looks like it kind of is tying or it's lapping over at least the waistband and so those will go in and then I will probably top stitch that close but I did want to just kind of explain how that all is going together and I'm probably going to finish that bit tonight and then call it for the night. All right, the structure of the apron is done. I've got my ruler measuring tape down the side and it is ready to be embellished. So I will come back to you once that is done, but that's going to be a lot of blanket stitching and then figuring out if I'm doing a Sharpie or like paint pen or what on here. Plus there's going to be lots of buttons on here. So there's a lot of embellishing that needs to happen, but I'm happy with it so far. So exciting. So I did actually go ahead and finish the blanket stitching around the apron tonight. So I am quite happy with how that looks. It was a little bit harder than on the sleeves just because the muslin is a lighter fabric. So it kind of wanted to pull, which you can kind of see in some areas, but I think it's still pretty good. So tomorrow I get to finish embellishing the apron and that will mean drawing in all of like the numbers and measurements and everything on the waistband, as well as putting all of the buttons on the bib portion because there's like 16 buttons that go on. And I think I'm going to leave it as a pinner apron. I have it just kind of pinned to the dress form right now, but I think I'm just going to wear it pinned because I don't feel like there's a better way to do pinner aprons like that style than just to wear them pinned. So that is my plan for that, but it does need hooks and eyes on the back of the waistband. It also, I do need to figure out how to put the needles in it. So tomorrow I plan to go to the uh, hardware store and get a bunch of wooden dowels and start trying to make said needles, but I have to figure out how to like get them in the skirt. I'm going to get a bunch of dowels tomorrow and go to work on that as well. Just wanted to check in really quickly. This is Tuesday night. I didn't have as much sewing time this evening, so I had work and then other errands after work, but the apron is effectively done. So I got all my buttons on. There are 16 in total. I kind of went with the largest buttons that I had in my stash that I had like multiples of. And then I also got the tape measure waistband done and decoration that falls. And this was really interesting. I actually went and scaled it. So a tape measure is 5 eighths inch wide. This is 2 inches wide. So I scaled up the difference basically between 5 eighths inches and 2 inches and this is what I got. Now I did make a mistake when I was working on it which was I started drawing my lines on this side instead of this side which meant that this had to be the end of the tape measure instead of the beginning because this is where I started drawing my lines. So this was supposed to start with one, two, three and have the lines on this side uh, but I couldn't do that because the lines were on this side and therefore the numbers had to be on this side. So it's ending at 60 or 59 right here, but 60 at the end. And then over here, it's starting over at one, two, three, going around the waist and coming up to 12. There's actually a hidden number 13 under here, but uh, lucky 13 for Halloween. And that is effectively the apron. It still needs the hooks and eyes on the back to connect to the waistband. And uh, it needs to have the needles fitted into it. That said, I did make one needle. This is a dowel. I got some dowels today at Lowe's. It was one of my errands. And I sanded it a bit. And I actually was able to carve an eye through it. Let me uh, get that to focus. So I was able to thread some yarn through. Now I have to make five of these, including the large one that I'm holding, but these will somehow be in the apron. I'm not sure about that yet. My mom thinks I'm crazy to even have stiff things in the apron. And again, I scaled these. So that's what I like doing when I do repros of things. I scale from the picture to my size. So yeah, I'm gonna make four scale needles and I'm going to paint them and Dora thinks that they're fun. She was just playing with it a second ago. She tried to steal it, but <laughs> but that is uh, what I'm gonna do. So I have to do a lot more sanding on those needles and then painting them and you know, not letting my cat eat them. Dora, really?
anyway. So I just wanted to check in and show you the apron. Uh, I hope to get more on the needles done tomorrow and then I also need to start the applique slash maybe embroidery because it dawned on me my machine isn't working on zigzags basically right now. I can't really do a satin stitch and that's what applique is. So that's going to be interesting. But anyway, just wanted to show you I'm really happy with the tape measure. By the way, this is Sharpie. Uh, this is a regular Sharpie. These are the thin, narrow Sharpies, or Sharpie. I just drew it on. I did do my numbers first in the friction pen, which is why you can see a little bit of pink there. But yeah, that's just Sharpie, so I hope it lasts. But it did pretty decently in not bleeding. I did get, like, a fair amount of bleed kind of at the starts there, but I think it's okay. From a distance, you can't really tell. And, um, and I think it's really, really cute. Like, I'm quite happy with the overall look of the House of Apron. So, I will check back in with you tomorrow when I'm working on stuff for this. Good night! So, I have been hard at work today, not sewing, but woodworking. And I have blisters forming on my finger to show it, which is... I don't know how that happened, because I was just sanding dowels and, like, holding them. And by doing that, I got a blister. So that's great. But I have five needles that are ready to be painted. Two of them kind of had an accident. Both of these wound up splitting. So that's not ideal. I have wrapped them in green masking tape for now and then sanded the edges of the masking tape, hoping that maybe that will be okay and I can paint it without primer, even though people have told me that I need primer. So... We're going to experiment tomorrow, but, or sometime, I don't know when I'm going to get to spray paint these because it's still smoky as anything outside. I still can't go outside. We have over like a 200 or around a 200, I think, uh, air quality right now. And I don't want to spray paint in a sealed garage because that sounds stupid, but I don't particularly want to go outside and attempt to spray paint these either. And then of course it is supposed to rain as soon as the air clears up because that's what's going to cause the air to clear up. So I have no idea when I'm going to get these painted and I also don't know when because I need to paint these first when I can get them in the apron not this guy obviously this is my big one so this is the one that she holds and uh I'm probably gonna thread some yarn through it just so that it looks more needly but again it will be painted silver metallic and then the other four all go into the apron. So these are all little guys. The tallest ones are 16 inches and then there's a 15 inch and there's like a 13 and a quarter inch I think. And I made these all to scale because I'm that person. So I have found that as someone who sews you do need math. So children don't completely ignore your math teacher. Just ignore them after algebra because that's all you need. You just need to find x and I, yeah, when I'm working with a drawing of something or like a design like that, I, I tend to scale everything. So that is what I did. I used the length of my skirt with the length of the picture and then solved for X to get the length of the needles or of really everything. The embroidery designs that are going to go around the hem, the apron length itself, the measuring tape, I scaled everything. So that's what I do to get things to look correctly on my size because I'm 5'10 and so I'm taller than the average human anyway and I still want things to look right. So yeah, I scaled my needles and again I just need to spray paint them and hope that that will stick to the masking tape and otherwise figure out how to solve the splits. This one has almost completely disconnected where it has split. The other one is um, only a partial disconnect. It's still holding together pretty well on the big one but it's unfortunate. But all of these do have an eye that I can pass yarn through using my yarn needle to get them through. So that's kind of exciting. And also some of them came out actually a little sharp. So I was brainstorming some ideas with some costuming friends this afternoon about how to get the needles to stay in the apron. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my awl and poke holes through the apron and then thread these through once they're painted and probably free check the hole, but I'm not 100% positive yet. So I don't know, again, when I'll be able to paint these and get these in, but I'm excited to get that progress going. And I guess in the meantime, that means that all I have left to do is the pin cushion hat, which 
I don't feel like doing right now, and also the appliques, which I think I'm going to attempt to start tackling later this evening. So hopefully I'll come back to you with that. Anyway, I just wanted to check in and share with you my needles. By the way, uh, these are all hand sanded. I don't own fancy tools, so I did, that's why I have a blister. I did all of these with just sandpaper, 80 grit sandpaper, and then I poked the hole using a bad kitchen knife. It is a combo. Bad kitchen knife, large, like really stiff yellow headed pin, screwdriver, and the yarn needle just to test that it was working, and sandpaper. So that's how I made these terrible eyes, which they are kind of terrible. You can see the, really the damage. That one uh, had a chunk that came off of it, I think. And uh, this one did too. So yeah, they're all, they're all questionable, but this is the level of my woodworking skills. And this is why I sew and don't do carpentry. Anyway, I will see you soon. So a couple of developments since yesterday. I was able to spray my needles yesterday with spray paint. The air number whatever got to I think 160 yesterday so I figured it was safe to A take Lion for a walk around the block and that's it and B uh, spray paint my needles in like the edge of the garage. So I did this one. I did the four that are in the apron which I will show you right here while I'm talking and I got all those done. I think that was all I did last night. I didn't start on the appliques last night however I did start on the appliques tonight. So what I did first was me with my like fairly non-artistic skills, I drew out a scissors, a spool of thread, and a thimble. And I've drawn out these patterns just out of computer paper. I've already cut out all of my uh, thread spools in the like base color. So the thread spools are all going to be brown base because of the top and the bottom and then I'm going to do different colors I think there's gonna be like five of them I think around the skirt and I'm gonna do five different colors of the thread spools just you know for fun I have not cut those out yet because I want to get the thread spool the base part sewn on and then I'm probably just going to like cut the tops off this pattern and cut out the middle part with the thread uh, I have not also cut out the scissors nor the thimble because I realized I didn't pre-wash my fabric yet. So I have a light gray for the thimble and a darker gray for the scissors and I still have to wash those. So that's what I'm going to do next. Take a little break to probably just like hand wash them in the sink because they're very small pieces. I think I got a quarter of a yard of each and then toss them in the dryer just really quickly. And that way I can cut those out and then I can start applicating them. I guess I need to go around and I need to mark where on the skirt they need to be as well. So I probably won't start the applicating today. I guess that'll wait until tomorrow, but I'm excited that I have everything kind of rolling now with my patterns. The scissors in particular, I'm very proud of these. Like they look just like the one that's on the Hasif. So I'm really excited about the fact that I, I drew pretty well for me. Again, I'm not an artist at all. And I'm a little nervous about how I'm going to actually like do them so that the fabric doesn't move all over. I don't know that I have any, you know, double-sided fusible type stuff. I probably should have gotten some, but I didn't. So we'll see. Maybe I'll decide to go to Joanne's tomorrow and get that or I'll double check my stash and make sure I don't have anything like that, a double sided fusible, because I know that that would really help. What I was going to do was I was going to stick an embroidery stabilizer on the back so that I at least can satin stitch nicer and neater. But yeah, I am nervous, especially with the scissors because of how delicate they are. But basically, as I'm cutting everything out, I'm cutting them out just about an eighth of an inch wider than my lines. So for example, I traced my thread spool on there and you can see the pink lines. That's where my tracing is. And then I cut it out an eighth of an inch past that so that I can do a straight stitch first, go in with my applique scissors and then do a satin stitch, which I feel like this is going to take a really long time and I'm going to wish that I had done machine embroidery, but also I didn't want to do machine embroidery. I wanted the look of the applique. So, and I couldn't find machine applique because that would have been real great, but at least this way I'm getting exactly what I want. So 
yeah okay anyway I will come back to you probably once I have started the applique maybe with a little how I'm doing the applique tutorial that'll probably be tomorrow so good night for Thursday I have started sewing the appliques into place. There are five repeats of the motifs and I have done one and a third repeat so far. And I did them using two different methods. So this one and this one I did using my regular presser foot. Sorry, my nail polish is terrible. And it was pretty slow and tedious, but they came out really pretty nice and neatly, which was quite pleasing. But again, very slow. So then I switched to a free motion quilting foot and I did this one and this one. And you'll notice um, they're really, really messy. So I mean, obviously that's going to get covered up with the satin stitch anyway, but this one is even a little bit wrinkly, which I'm a little concerned about. I think it'll be okay. Of course, this is the front, basically it's front side of the skirt. So, you know, not great. So anyway, I am going to switch back to the regular presser foot and just take it slow and steady but that does unfortunately mean that I probably will not finish this dress for this vlog so here's your warning that it's Friday night I'm going to keep working on this for a little while longer tonight but that just leaves me Saturday to work so and I still have to make a hat and do the hem so yeah probably not going to get that much more done but I wanted to pop in and just tell you that for the little update. All of the initial appliques are now sewn on, but of course what I had forgotten before was that I still need to do the thread portions of the five spools of thread. So that is going to be five different colors and I'm going to cut just that bit. So I'm going to cut my little applique pattern and just do this section here so that it's not the wooden part of the thread spool, it'll just be the color. And then that has to get layered on top of this and I have to sew those down also. So. I think I'm going to cut away the excess of the thread spool first because that'll probably make it easier to then cut away the excess of the thread part of the thread spool because otherwise it's going to be two layers that I'm cutting at once over here and I don't want to mess with that. So let me show you really quickly how I do the cutting of the applique because it's pretty easy but you do need the right tool. So you wanna get yourself onto a nice flat surface so that it's nice and smooth and easy to cut. And then you wanna get a scissors like this. These are curved ginger scissors. I will stick a link down in the description below. Highly, highly recommend these scissors. They're great for thread snips, embroidery snips, whatever. They're so good at getting really close to things. And so that's why they're excellent at getting close to the applique as well. So you just get right in there with your scissors like this so that it's like underneath and you just cut along where you have stitched. Now obviously this is not going to go quite as smoothly on that one scissors that I tried to do free-handed because that line isn't actually straight so I'm going to have to be a lot more careful cutting that line. For right now I am just going to cut the thread spools so that I can do that layering. It's about 11:30 right now and I really want to get those bits done tonight because then tomorrow I can just do all of the satin stitching and that's when these will really come to life more because right now they just look a little plain. The reason that you want to do this on a flat surface is because these scissors are super, super sharp and super pointy and they can really get in there. So uh, you can very easily cut your fabric, as in your base fabric, if you are not doing this on a flat surface. But as it is, this is going to give me a really nice finish. And now what I'll be able to do is I can take a satin stitch and just go right over the edge. And so this is being held down by my initial stitching and none of that stitching is going to show. So that will be the next thing after I put that other layer on top. So this is what it looks like when I've added the second layer of applique over the top but haven't cut it down yet. And then this is what it looks like once I've cut that down. So much more thread-like. There will be all of the satin stitching that goes on this too. I think I'm actually going to do this part of the satin stitching in like a darker purple instead of black. Everywhere else I was going to do black. 
but I just kind of feel like the thread should have like a darker version of its own color and I'm possibly gonna do some just um, straight stitch like lines going across too so it looks kind of more like thread. Some of this is gonna be straight stitch so because for example down the blades of the scissors I am gonna have a straight stitch as well so anyway but I think that's all gonna be for another day as in tomorrow because I think I'm just gonna sit in front of the TV and hem this and then go to sleep because it's like midnight. I'm really liking just like how it looks. I think the color is really fun. I have hot pink, blue, lavender, and then I have like a kind of a Kelly green and a yellow. So there's the yellow and the Kelly green. So those are my colors and I like the pops that it gives. So I think that'll be really fun. And I'm looking forward to doing more on the appliques tomorrow, like satin stitching for hours. I didn't realize how hard it would be to do like, or how time consuming, I guess, it would be to do like applique on the machine as opposed to machine applique. And by that, I mean when you use your embroidery machine to do applique. That stuff is super, super easy and fun and fast. This is maybe not as much, but I think it'll look really good. So anyway, good night. When you're cutting an interior section like this, you have to be very careful to only pick up the outer fabric when you poke your scissors into it. You want to make sure you're not cutting the base level fabric beneath it. I think I'm rather in love with how they turned out. As I get closer, you can maybe see some more of the details, like the little dots on the thimble and the lines and pieces of thread on the thread spools. And then of course we have our lovely scissors. And there are five of these that go around the whole skirt. I'm going to attempt to show you that, but I don't know that there's room for me to get back there. So there are five of these motifs all the way around the skirt with each spool of thread being a different color. We'll go around the other side now. My really dirty floor. And there's our last one. And the whole thing together, in my opinion, just looks freaking adorable. So yeah, super happy with how this is looking. I love the pops of color down at the bottom. I'm so glad I did it appliques and not embroidery because I just wanted that like solid pop of color. 
and I think with the apron and everything it just looks pretty perfect. So yes, super super happy with this project so far. And the reason that I say so far is because this project is not yet done. I do have all of the dress and the apron finished, except the hooks and eyes on the apron, but I'll get that actually probably tonight. But I haven't made the hat yet. So as you might have seen from when I have shared the picture of the original dress before, she does have a lovely little hat, a pin cushion hat, and that I did not have time to do this week. And I know probably a lot of you are thinking, oh, well, if I didn't make a skirt at the beginning of the week, then maybe I would have had time for the hat. And you know what? You're probably right, but I wanted to get that skirt done and the hat though, you will have to come back for in next week's vlog because I will be starting that hat probably this Monday. That said, I am again super, super happy with how this came out. I think that I've done a lot of fun work this week too. I mean like making giant needles, making like a ruler belt for my apron and well okay the applique to be honest was not really the most fun it was actually pretty tedious and it took me like all day but I really like how it turned out so I guess it was worth it so I'm quite pleased with everything that I was able to accomplish this week and please do join me next week for the finished project I do have a link by the way down below in the description to a playlist with everyone's historical Halloween 2020 videos. So please do make sure to check that out. There's already, I think at least four or five different people who have released videos on this collaboration project. It's very, very exciting to watch everyone's progress on all of these projects. Anyway, that is it for me this week. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my vlogs coming out on Tuesday and regular content coming out on Fridays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support me in all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my coffee account down below so I'd love it if you could send me a coffee and help me pay for all these uh, wonderful garments that I put together. <laughs> Again thank you so so much I really hope you enjoyed this video have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!